the public comment. We'll close this public hearing at this time. Item 5B, review and possible action to adopt ordinance 2023-02 landmarks and historic preservation ordinance of the city of Ladysmith. I don't know if you want to give some background on yeah, what we Legal Affairs we, came up with. Legal Affairs uh, unanimously recommended that this not be adopted. And, you know, basically two things that we want to address in this subsequent revision is that none of this would happen without the consent of the property owner. And the second kind of more minor thing from my perspective is some incentives, some financial incentives that might be present with grants that would be available for people that wanted to remodel the size or kind of a little bit of a cure to help people out. So we, what we decided is that we would like to, I would actually like to make a motion that we reject the ordinance as it was initially proposed to the council, uh, whenever that was, uh, was that two weeks ago? Three, yeah. So that, that's, that's my motion. We're going to bring it back at a later date with revisions with the most important thing being that none of this would happen without the consent of the owner of the property. And the second thing with, with some incentives for people that would want to potentially try to list their properties as, as historic. So for right now, plus, you know, it's been a big thing in the newspaper, it's been a big thing in, in the community that. that job as uh, elected representatives here to you know follow the law and to influence the governors but there, there's also important perceptual issues that are going on and I think that I would like to have a roll call vote to um, turn this down to basically say that we're not going to reject this proposal as it was initially put forward. So that's my motion. The motion has got to be made in a positive manner, correct? Yes, that's generally a better way to do it. Uh, it, it might be a, a motion to adopt the ordinance and a call for a roll call vote. Uh, or a motion to bring the vote down. Okay. Why did this not come up in the vote today? We discussed this all day. Um, no, I guess there's no reason not to do it your way. Okay. It's hard. It's hard to put the vote on a negative. I don't think it is. <laughs> you either um, say that you uh, reject it as it, or, or you don't. So if you'd like to restate your motion, Dr. Weiss. Okay, I will uh, make a motion that we will reject the uh, historic property. Is there a second? I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Mr. Christians. And just based out of the discussion in that meeting, I think go ahead. Everybody should have a copy with the revisions highlighted that were discussed. So, I don't know if you want to look at them at all right now or worry about them some other time. There were three that were discussed. And then I noticed that there was a fourth one that did uh, reference the incorrect chapter of city ordinances on building codes, which would be on the second to last page. Any further discussion? Mr. Mayor? Mr. Kenyon? It's a pretty good day when I can learn something, and I've learned plenty since the last legal affairs meeting. Uh, there's, there's a whole bureaucracy. Uh, associated with the Wisconsin State Historic Preservation Office. Um, with the adoption of an ordinance, uh, there, are, there are potential benefits to a property owner uh, in the city. Uh, the city can benefit by uh, the state State Historic Preservation Office, sending an expert here to 
to look at our town um, and assist the city in determining which buildings might be of historic character and which might not be. Uh, that is at no cost to the city. Um, with, with an ordinance, uh, there is the potential for a developer to receive a 20% 20, 20 of the cost of improvement tax credit on their federal income tax. A 20% federal tax credit and a state 20% tax credit for a total of a potential 40% income tax credit for the cost of improvement to a historic building. Um, I guess how much that is depends on the particular individual's income tax. Um, those were, were the two big things I thought I learned today. Um, they, uh, those things happen only if we have an ordinance, but there's so much poison in the well right now that I'm, I don't know that um, this is the time to proceed with an ordinance. I don't know. Well, I didn't know those things and may not know the same thing. Maybe the rest of the committee did, but it's insignificant. Thank you, Mayor. Dr. Lynch. I think certainly the committee and the council in general would like to get an ordinance uh, at some point enacted if it would help us as a community. But it's you know not something that we want to do without anybody's consent. We want to make that very clear to the community. So we want to have something that gives our administrator in our city you know kind of another uh, arrow in the quill, so to speak, to be able to help us with, with properties would be a lot. So we're not giving up on this. We just want to make it clear that we're not going to be designating any property without the consent. Any further discussion? Mr. Hoover. Yeah, I agree with uh, Steve. I don't think it was because there's any historical significance to the grade school, but I think this was adopted because for a financial incentive for the particular developer that we have. Uh, not because there was just a lot of great historical architecture or anything there, but it was for the financial incentive for the developer. And that, and that, that, that clause where it shall be with the uh, property owner's consent is really, you know, important to me to do that also. Any further discussion? I just want clarification. Are we voting the way it was appeared to us last time? Correct. Or as the same ordinance number is now? No, rejecting the previous one. Okay. Because what's presented says no property shall be designated as a landmark structure without the consent of the owner. That was the copy given to you by yes. Mr. Christensen for further consideration. Yeah, yeah for being able to track, track the changes versus just putting the changes on a separate sheet of paper. You know, here they can be visualized however it's in the way that it's delivered. So. The legal affairs, we didn't completely agree on whether we should bring that up for a vote this time around or not. It wasn't consensus, so basically the decision was to kind of postpone that a little bit. Still wanted to get something done, but wait until the next council meeting and probably get something, hopefully, in the agenda at that time. Any further discussion? Would the clerk please do a roll call vote? Mr. Alfonso? Um, so, the vote of yes would be to reject. To reject. Yeah. Okay, I'll vote. Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes, please. Yes. Mr. Peterson? Yes. Mr. Christensen? No. Dr. Weiss? Yes. Mr. Rabin? No. Mr. Huber? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Moving on, 5C, review and possible action to adopt resolution 2023-15, authorizing water main, sanitary sewer installation, street reconstruction, and levying special assessments against benefited property. 
pursuant to special assessment police powers under section 66.0703 Wisconsin statutes for the West 5th Street North and West 9th Street South Street project. And you all have a copy of that attached. Public hearings were held for both of these, and crappy owners were given a chance to speak. I don't think anybody showed up at the public hearings. Yeah. Um, Just more. The street, no, Larson yeah. Street, yeah. yeah. So there were more crappy owners on the Fifth Street. Mr. Christian, so I'll make a motion to approve. Motion in a second. Is there any further discussion? Roll call vote, please. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Peterson? Yes. Mr. Christensen? Yes. Dr. White? Yes. Mr. Rabin? Yes. Mr. Huber? Yes. Mr. Alcanto? Yes. Motion passes. Item 5D. Review and possible action to adopt ordinance 2023-06, amending section 11-4-1. City ordinances on outside consumption. I didn't see anything in place um, in regards to glass fares. That, that might be an issue on the street. Um. Uh, item B, non-resealable, non-breakable containers such as metal, plastic, or paper. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, we don't want a bunch of broken glass little or bottles. Somebody like to make a motion. Mr. Mayor, you would be the yes, absolute city administrator for this perspective. I think we would like to have this pass and we can maybe else give us a oh, sure um, yeah as I had mentioned I think it was just in legal affairs I might have mentioned it here or there at previous city council meetings but um, my wife and I had ventured down to Oklahoma a few years ago for their shanty days uh, festival we actually didn't know what was going on and then happened upon it we were just going to go there and, and check out the lake and the uh, winery and the brewery there anyway and happened upon their their town festival and was amazed to see that um, one it was really busy you couldn't get anywhere near the downtown vehicle um, so we had to walk in quite a ways but two that there were folks uh, holding and carrying beer wine all in uh, plastic cups everybody seemed to be having a good time all the businesses seemed to be to be, to be going crazy doing great. Um, didn't notice any any drunk kids stumbling around or anything like that. Didn't notice anybody being drunk and disorderly. Of course it was still um, in the afternoon, so you never know. Um, but so this was kind of something that, that came up here what cheap I think we've been doing music on minor in the downtown since probably 2016, give or take. Um, when we first started doing that, we actually had to put up a put up a fence and really 
really mark off the area that we were having that and then i think the second or third year we got the you know switch from the the fence requirement to the, the barricade and i think overall you know we've had good experience with that no major problems um under the current city ordinance here too um you know you, you can have a, a beverage out on the sidewalk during the mardi gras parade from i think noon to three on sunday uh give or take so the thought here was um to just give it a try uh, similar to, to algoma sturgeon bay has one i think egg harbor has one a lot of the more touristy areas and i know as as chief noted you know we're not necessarily right along a, a nice scenic lake shore um, we are pretty close to the, the flambeau river which i think is equally beautiful um are we quite the tourist destination in those places not today could we be maybe um, so this was just kind of an, an attempt to uh to give it a try um obviously you know it doesn't work out and uh, there's pandemonium and anarchy in the street and litter everywhere uh, the council always has the power to reenact the old ordinance and get rid of it again so we're just uh yeah trying to think outside the outside the box and kind of take something out of the playbook of places that seem to do a pretty good job on uh, tourism and bringing in tourism Anyone willing to entertain a motion? I'll say a motion. Um, so yeah, I definitely would agree with Al and think this would be good to give a try. And, um, yeah, I got on it. I think um, working with the chief, we should definitely keep a close eye on it. Uh, could could be need to be changed quickly if you know, depending on people's reaction. Right. Yeah. So if we have any more discussion, we're going to need a motion. I'll make a motion to approve it. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? <coughs> Mr. West. Um, Barb is from Rib Lake. They have their Ice Age days. Um, and in that, they close up Main Street. Of course, it's a lot smaller than our Main Street. But they close up Main Street. Um, they have a band. Um, nightly, um, you can go into any bar and buy a beer, and they want you to throw the can in the street because the hot, the Boy Scouts at the end of it, early in the morning, the next morning, come and clean all the cans up and then sell it for their Boy Scouts, sell the aluminum. So. They've been doing it for years, but they close up the whole main street from one end to the other. So it's just a thought. Any further discussion? Mr. Hoover. Well, I just, uh, you know, you can drive down here Sunday morning and see all the cigarette butts and everything littered on main street. Um, I can see what this, I know what you're saying about um, visitors coming into town but for me with the with the crowds that I've seen I think the potential for a negative outcome is pretty strong so I'm going to vote against it any further discussion Chief. I just I just want to be clear too if this if the council decides to pass this and, and I have concerns to voice in the future I want them to be you know listened to because obviously we're going or any of the business owners in the downtown if they start to have issues with it. I'm kind of apprehensive to see this go through, but uh, yeah, I guess it's, it is what it is. It's up to council. So just as long as I have concerns with voice and people listen. So that's all. Thank you. Yep. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. By E, review possible action to adopt resolution 2023 16, 
authorizes submittal of application to the WEDC Idle Sites Redevelopment Grant Program. I'll have a copy attached. Mr. Christensen. Just a brief background on this. Um, our school developer, North Point, was uh, in talks with WEDC about some funding that might be available um, for the school conversion and WEDC invited them to apply for their idle sites grant since that building has been mostly unused. The property has been mostly unused for a couple of years. Um, they thought it was a good fit for that. However, the developer themselves can't apply for it. Municipalities can, so we would essentially be applying, they fill everything out, pass it through me, I'd submit everything, and then if we were successful, we would essentially subgrant that work to them. I believe it's up to $250,000 that can go towards the housing conversion, the community center, the outdoor improvements that we just discussed. So that's what this authorizes. Uh, the wording in it is similar to the one we did right at the beginning of the year. Um, for the farmer's market pavilion um, that was successful to the tune of $50,000. So um, basically, yeah, the only thing that changes in here is the title of the resolution. Mr. Christians, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? carries. View impossible action to adopt resolution 2023-17 authorizing submittal of application to the WEDC Community Development Investment Grant Program. You also have a copy of that attached. Mr. Kirchies. So the background on this one and uh, the subject of it is still a closed session item because it hasn't been fully completed yet. Um, but this is for uh, a development type project in or around the downtown area. Um, different pot of money through the WEDC. And really the only difference in wording from the one you just approved is uh, the title on the top. I think that provides sufficient information. So pretty much in In a second, is there any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> View of possible action to adopt resolution 2023-18, dividing interest in joint management semi-trailers, authorizing the disposal of city owned semi-trailers should have an explanation attached. <coughs> Mr. Christensen. So most of you, I think that's been your first time are aware of uh, five hour processors, the mess that they left, uh, not only the city of Lady Smith, but Russ County with the private citizen over in Glen Flora, um, either Catawba or Canyon, a bunch of stuff in West Bend. Um, the DNR, some, or the state some time ago approved money for the DNR to assist with the clean, cleanup of uh, the hazardous materials that were stored here in Lady Smith at two industrial sites that we jointly own with the county. Um, they've completed that work, all the hazardous stuff is out. The DNR declared that the trailers are not hazardous and therefore are the city and county's problem to get rid of. Um, I talked with county administrative coordinator and I believe she consulted their corporate council and we came up with an agreement that we would split the trailers 50-50 um, however there's nine trailers and we didn't want to get out of saw and cut one in half so 
as part of the agreement, uh, the city would take five trailers and the county would take four. Um, we're not looking to pull one over on the county though. So um, in consideration of that, we're letting the county pick the four trailers that they want first, and then we'll just take the leftovers. Um, I believe they actually have a, a storage use plan for, for some of them. Um, so with this resolution, we would be uh, relinquishing ownership, our ownership share in four of the trailers and accepting the full ownership of the five remaining trailers. Um, this one also states that uh, the city has determined that each individual trailer remaining under city ownership is no longer able to reliably or economically perform the work required of it, carries no value, and directs the city administrator to dispose of the property at his discretion in the most economical way possible. And I can tell you I've already talked to a towing and salvage operation in the area that will just take them off our hands without charging us. And I assume they'll make a little money off the scrap to make it worth their time. Anyway, that's about it. And make note this is something that uh, city and county leadership are uh, in consensus on. So we're going uh, a great day in, in our history. We'll stay in. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Mr. Kenyon. Do you have a timeline as to when the county might identify their four trailers? I was told by the highway commissioner that that would happen today. However, I have not been able to get out to verify that, but I trust them. Um, I can check tomorrow. But Otherwise, we can give them a little bit of time. We've sat here for, what, a decade, 15 years, so a couple more days isn't going to necessarily hurt. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. This brings us to item six, closed session. I actually go into closed session under the authority granted in Wisconsin statute section 19.851B. Simply a motion, dismissal, licensing, discipline, or tenure of a public employee or a person licensed by a board or commission. This exception permits preliminary discussion and investigation without the necessity of providing actual notice to the individual involved. However, before any evidentiary hearing can be conducted or formal action taken, Notice must be given to the person involved so that he or she can exercise his or her right to request an open session for those purposes. For example, to reconsider the denial of a liquor license application and revocation of current liquor license. Do I have a motion on close? I have a motion to second to go into closed session. Any further discussion? Call vote, please. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Mr. Alcesso? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Peterson? Yes. Mr. Christensen? Yes. Mr. White? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Mr. Stenson. Uh, I'm not sure what this is. Thank 
questions for Mr. Stenzel. Mr. To Mr. Johnson. Um, we had the library uh, meeting last week. Uh, we went over uh, the solar panels are up and running, and they are at least cutting monthly to a half. Is there another solar array going up there? Or about all three of them there now? Is there one going to put a third one up or no? There was talk. There was talk. Yeah. But I don't know if you went up. That's why I was asking. So it never got finalized. Then. Not as of yet. Dr. Weiss. Nothing to add. Any questions for Dr. Weiss? District 6, Mr. Raven. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, on item A, um, June 2nd, they we kicked off the music on minor, and it was held on at Peter Valentine, and I, it, without the, me and uh, Al Jr. were talking, because with the rain and what we were going to do, and then we ended up, Brian Gary uh, let us use the garage, put the bands in and stuff, and about Quarter after six, it quit raining and ended up being a fairly good turnout. Mayor was there, Al Senior was there, Mr. Ostenso was there. I mean, it was a good turnout. There was a nice band called Head of the Class with some young kids from Flambeau High School. Very talented kids, very talented. And hopefully they can go further than what, you know, because it was really.
really good that he saw the base plate and it was very good turnout. Until about 9.30 when the mosquitoes came and everybody yeah. got up. <laughs> but other than that, it was a very good evening. And uh, other than that, we have a public works committee meeting Thursday morning at 10 a.m. Other than that, that's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Any further questions for Mr. Raven? District 7, Mr. Hoover. I don't have anything except that I've got a note in my deck um, from the West County Clerk, uh, from Lori to Sherry, and I'll just read, read it here. It says, uh, this is, has had to do with review and possibly approve West County Court's request for the use of the municipal courtroom in case of an emergency. I'm, hi Sherry, I'm currently working on a West County Circuit Court continuity of operations plan. One of the requirements in the plan is where will is where will hold mandatory court functions should there be an emergency. I see several other counties reference municipal court. Would it be okay if we listed the city of Ladysmith Municipal Court facilities as our backup place to conduct court in an emergency? My other thought would be the fire hall. Would that be possible for us to list that building? I wasn't sure who to ask, so I thought I would start with you. So, uh, are there any uh, comments or questions or objections? Did you, you Ray? I think that's on the property committee. But uh, I, let's finish with this. Yeah. And I just have one comment. So um, tonight, I was just um, asking the council for approval of the municipal courtroom, and then police and fire um, will be asked about the fire hall use. So um, Judge Carter, you, you had said, as long as it doesn't conflict with our court schedule, the judge doesn't have a problem. Size is no issue. Yeah, what well, can we do for them? Yeah, but I mean, you've got plenty of room for Not for the circuit court, but if they want to use it, they can use it. But there'd be a lot of strangers out on the street. All they can have is beer. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. They do not. Yeah. So, would somebody like to make a motion to that effect? So moved. So, that. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Carlson. Uh, I asked about the year of this place because right now I've gone on the computer finally after 20 years. <laughs> and it's it's surprising what what's changed <clears throat> after 20 years. It was simple then. But anyway, I, I'm working on the computer to put all the stuff on there for how what is has to be done for this year. So I'm updating all of that and then what got accomplished this year. I'm going to back update that too, and I'll turn it over to the property committee. But then, you, then you'll see all the stuff that still hasn't been done yet. Some has been carried forward for four years, five years. Okay. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Mr. Charles. You're welcome. Any further questions for Mr. Hoover? 15, police and fire report. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, just to keep the council up to date on our process to fill our vacant position, we have interviews this Wednesday night, and we're down to three candidates now instead of five. Two have already pulled out. Um, I'll keep you up to date throughout the next council meeting. I'll advise you where, where we're at in that process. Other than that, I have nothing. Any questions for the chief? Thank you. Thank you. Can I just ask one question? Um, come to my attention, you know, I think the, the killings of police officers in the area um, have taken a toll on, on the force to a degree, at least through my contact professionally. And uh, I'm wondering, you know, what kind of support services have been made available in the wake of, of the slaves? Have, have you done anything else to kind of try to? Uh, well, we have. We are. We enrolled with. We're enrolled with Real Living after 2016 when Deputy Dan Glaze was shot and killed. Uh, Real Living is a company out of, I think it's Chippewa. Um, and they have 
professional help for for our officers if, if they need it. I mean, they can do financial help, they can do any kind of help with real living. So yeah, that's always an option or availability, but I mean, you, you hit, it, hit it on the head. I mean, this was, this trend has started way before the local officers were shot and killed in the area that, that uh, we can think, well, I'm not gonna get a rant about that, but um, there's a lot of reasons why I want, why, you know, like this year, um, there's supposed to be a academy in Northwood Tech in Rice Lake, and there's the physical agility to get into the tech uh, to do the academy. Uh, I don't think they're gonna have a class this year. And last year we had 19 because I taught over there, so we had 19. And this year we don't think there's even gonna be a, a minimum of nine. They need nine to make the make the academy run. And I don't think there's gonna be an academy in Rice Lake this year. So. Is there anything the council can do to try to support you and your officers? Uh, no, I think the council. I think the council's been very um, good with our department, you know, over the last few years. So it's just it's it's not just locally; it's nationally. It's you know it's going to be a problem. It's concerning because I don't know. You know, the county is going to be losing a few more deputies here in the near future. Uh, they had one applicant for their one position and I don't think that person is going to uh, move forward so I, they're gonna have to open it up again for the third time so well, I appreciate that though but yeah I mean that I think the council and you know has been good over the years to try to retain the people we have and that's obviously very important public works report <clears throat> In February, I got the minutes in front of me on February 13th of 2023, the council voted to approve a bid from Toyson for a new <coughs> water sewer utility truck. Um, that bid was for $57,160. And for whatever reason, for supply chain reasons, and I'm not sure, but Toyson is unable to secure a, a commercial work truck um, to put a to put a body on it. Um, he said it's um, it's just a problem Chevy wide it sounds like he's contacted other Chevy dealers and they're unable to secure you know a cab chassis to put a, to put a service body on it. So he um, through email discussions, you know, uh, we've kind of you know, backed out of that and, and um, in the meantime the truck that it was going to replace uh, the motor the cam went out of it. So it's about a six thousand dollar rebuild to fix it, and it's just it's not worth it. So that's actually parked right now. At that time, um, there was two bids: one from Toysons, one from Chilsons. Um, theirs was fifty nine thousand. I had reached out to Chilsons and talked with them. There, maybe if they could find a truck, it's still January or February to get a body to put on that truck, which is kind of out of the question. So they, went to Monroe Truck, who supplies the, the service body, and, um, you know, they can, everything's possible with the internet. So they have a, they have an application where I did a 250-mile search of the city of Ladysmith for trucks on the lot that are ready to purchase. And um, my first choice, which was in Hiawatha, Iowa, which was a, a good price, 57137 that actually sold today, so that's unavailable. Kaiser Ford in Madison, Wisconsin has basically the exact same thing that you know we were looking for, other than it's a Ford, not a Chevy. That's for fifty-seven thousand three hundred. Um, so just slightly more than what the Toyson bid was, and I could go down the line. There was another one at Kaiser Ford, a one ton which we don't need for fifty-eight eight, a, a Ram for sixty-three, and a couple other Fords, sixty-four, sixty-five, sixty-five. So um, if anybody would care to make a motion. For the city place to purchase that one in Kaiser Ford Madison. Mr. Christensen. I'll make that motion. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Mr. Mr. Kenyon. Given the, the current situation in America, uh, might the director be authorized to proceed to the second lowest bid and recall small wine and learn that the truck at Kaiser is sold? He doesn't have to wait two weeks to come back and ask again. I appreciate that. I actually did, because I know 
So I did call at like four o'clock and they were, were both available at four o'clock. But I will tell you that they're 2022s and they're discounting them severely because they want the 2022s off their lot. So they are selling. But I appreciate that. And so the second one is a is 58.8. The lowest one is 57.3 and the next one is 58.8. Both at Kaiser and Florida. Good. I'm in your motion. You're welcome. Amend the second. second. Okay. Any further discussion? Roll call vote, please. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Peterson? Yes. Mr. Christensen? Yes. Governor Weiss? Yes. Mr. Raven? Yes. Mr. Cooper? Yes. Mr. Alessandro? Yes. And uh, just one quick update on brush chipping. Um, I can't say that we are 100% through the city for the first time, but I can say we're probably 99.5% through the city on the first round. Uh, we will actually be starting back out on, you know, going up to the north of the city and starting all over again and coming through. It's estimated, and this is quick math, not full of timesheets, but just going back through on who did what and how. We have over 800 hours, 800 man hours into, into chipping brush. Um, that's including our manpower plus the Camp Lambo manpower. And we will probably have another two full weeks before we make it through again. Um, so it's a, it was quite a winter storm. Mr. Kenyon. Can you estimate when round two will be done? Um, later this week, hopefully, we have Camp Lambo is supposed to be here tomorrow, I believe, but it's the only day this week that they're available. So um, we're going to utilize them going into back to the base. We're not going to just do a rope. We're going to take them and use the do the huge piles that we know are out there, the big you know, ones that are lots of manpower and take lots of time. So we won't be starting out in any designated spot, but we'll be getting big piles. But sometime this week, we will be doing I noticed there were two big piles in the Either way, so that was just a quick little rundown. It's been a it's been a daunting task, I can tell you that. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Any further questions for Mr. Wersinger? Administrators report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um I have an item A, but um Sinuses have been kind of kicking my butt here this afternoon. I'm not sure if it's an air quality thing or what, but I also said I'd make more of an effort to spend more free time with my kids. This is going to be a 20 30 minute presentation, so if it's a nice night tonight. I'd prefer to skip that and maybe put it on the next one. Um, I will direct your attention though to two articles I put out. Uh, both were in today's meter telegram, 20 made the front page. If uh, planned an open air around the old shop to a site, you can read that all there. And then um, I think it was the third page in um, both Governor Hebert and the POP uh, pushing ahead with new housing. Uh, and in today's society, it's hard to get left and right to agree on a whole lot. Um, but there's, I think, five different bills that uh, the governor has signed that Republicans push for uh, to develop workforce and affordable housing, uh, including fixing up existing housing and converting vacant commercial buildings to housing. So uh, please give both of those a read. And I think that's all I've got. Do you have any questions for the administrator? Attorney's report. Who am I to bite you for 30 minutes? Mary Reichman came out last week and knew what that's about. Uh, I, think it, I think it was 100 years ago last week, the Supreme Court decided the Pentagon Papers case. The Supreme Court uh, spoke at great length about the public's right to know what their elected representatives are doing. Uh, and, and they do have a right to know. Uh, Wisconsin
not something that is foremost among the states in, in insisting on open government. Uh, just for fun, I printed off a dozen or so copies of what I think are the relevant statutes regarding open meetings, even some things that you would not think would qualify as a government meeting requiring notice are a government meeting requiring notice Secondly, there was a question a while back about mailboxes and snow removal and vehicles parking. Incredibly, uh, the United States Postal Service has a regulation, standards governing the design of curbside mailboxes, uh, last revised in 2001. And I'll leave that on the table too for those who are interested in mailbox location and how the carrier's obligation might be and so on. Thank you. Any questions about anything? No, I have any questions for the city attorney? Moving on, item 19, licenses and permits. We have a list in front of you. for cigarette and tobacco products license pending PD approval. where the gym and big uh, grocery, the same plaza down there, is the uh, suite uh, 100. Is there anyone who wants So would this, this be a new business or are you operating it's with a, the grocery store? It's a new, no, no, it's a new business. New business. It's a new business, yes. It's like cigar, uh, pipe tobacco, tobacco, like this kind of Anyone willing to make a motion? So I'll move. I forgot, I introduced myself. I'm Emmy Samir from Minneapolis. I got business down there, and a few friends, they said, you could open a few businesses in Wisconsin. Uh, this, nice to meet you guys. Uh, nice to meet you. Uh, we have a motion, do we have a second? I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Change of agent, Kristen Oil Company. New agent, Amanda Smith. Pending PD approval. I'll make that motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Uh, Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bring
brings us to item 20, Mayor's Forum. So at this time, I'd like to provide a little information, especially to our newer council members, on duties and responsibilities of this body. I'd like to thank you all for stepping up to devote your time to public service. And while we as a group have varying degrees of government experience, job descriptions, duties, and responsibilities can be found in section two of our code of ordinances. I would encourage everyone to give it a read. On a related note, I would also ask that each member thoroughly read the packets they are provided for each council meeting. So you all staff work hard to put this information together so you can be informed on the items that appear on the agenda. And that's all I have. Thank you. Item 21, closed session. Action vote, Mr. Christensen. I asked for this to be put on the agenda and I had a discussion this afternoon with a couple of guests I had invited them to uh, get into this discussion. We felt, felt it would be best to put it off to a future meeting. So All right. no need for item 21 or 22 this evening. All right, thank you. With that, we come to item 23. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So I'll move. I have a motion and a second. Is there further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone.